Jai Hind. That is my idea of India. It is adopted as a greeting by the armed forces. No religion, no casteism, no creed, no color, only country. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I was requested by the organizers to capture our country's kaleidoscopic nature by sharing thumb, some thoughts of my idea of India. Besides thoughts on idea of India, two words, communalism and divisiveness, find a prominent mention in the request emailed to me. These words were supposed to be linked to my experience in the army till I retired as the deputy chief of army staff and later as former vice chancellor of Aligarh Muslim University. I will address both. What is my idea of India? It is given by the word idea. I for inclusive nature, D for diverse nature of the country, E for equitable treatment to everybody, gender, citizen, religion, these don't matter. And lastly, affirmative action. Affirmative action has long been uh, displaced by a word called appeasement. Appeasement has several fault lines. There's a vast difference between the two. Affirmative action is when you pull up somebody without hoping for something in return. What is appeasement? Appeasement is when you try and help somebody hoping against hope for a return favor. If appeasement of the minorities is incorrect, can appeasement of the majority be condoned? I don't think so. I was uh, insulated from communal experience because of the fact that my family confirms to the Sufi order, which is the softer face of Islam. Later on, during my service with the army, I never had to face anything which smelt of communalism at all. So I've had a very insulated upbringing. I have not been affected by communalism. And this is something which I am very proud of. Unfortunately, recently, with the advent of the social media and its derived anonymity. You are anonymous. People have been given free license to air what they feel like. And I'm very sad to say that this has also affected a minuscule proportion of the armed forces, retired officers. Social media, both fake and otherwise, has fanned the winds of suspicion and discrimination. And this trend is very much on the rise. It is not uncommon in social media when anybody articulating a dissenting view is dubbed anti-national. 
It is my fond hope that this is a passing phase. From my service in the Army, I can say with conviction that a gust of wind cannot approve, uh, cannot uproot something which is flexible. For example, a bamboo tree which is strong and deep rooted. Every gust of wind results in a sway and what happens to the bamboo? It bends but doesn't get uprooted. Its flexibility and deep roots are its strength and so is that in the case of India. A sway is local turbulence. It comes and blows over. Roots, as the roots of India, are firm and will hold on every time. The army which I served in reflects the idea of India, its loyalty to the Constitution and its apolitical stance derive from its very existence. It derives its culture from our preamble. We, the people, the army takes its cue from that we, the people. The charter of the armed forces is unlimited liability in service of the nation with the precondition that a runners-up position is unacceptable in the armed forces. That is India's core value of unity in diversity that we hope to preserve in the armed forces till death do us apart. You have witnessed time and again whenever the machinations of the adversary were thrust upon our country, whether it be in 1948, 62, 65, 71, Kargil, Parakram, Somadharong, Chu, Galwan, Tawang. The list is endless and will remain so in the push and pull of the emerging world order. We will always be pulled and pushed. We have much work ahead to find our rightful place in the Committee of Nations. This is work in progress. What makes us so? This was something which was asked. I think number one is unity in diversity. The varied hues of the land, the Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Christians, and Parsis are five fingers of the hand. When one finger is clenched and when all are clenched, we can become a powerful fist. What happens if one finger is damaged or hurt? I'm afraid the hand cannot be clenched into a fist. We are really an orchestra of various instruments. I've already named them, five or six, which play in harmony for the good of music, for the good of our country. From this, we derive our symphony. The world awaits the music of world is one, the theme of G20. We did this again in 1971 to provide, uh, to, to prevent genocide when Muslims were killing Muslims. As neighbors, we had to act and we did. Historians call it the only just war in the 20th century, and I totally agree with them. Our treatment of 90,000, 93,000 prisoners of war was based solely on the prescribed norms of the Geneva Convention. We extended 
prompt support to disasters all over the world, whether it be Turkey, Syria, the tsunami in Japan, the Maldives, the list of India extending support to citizens of the world is endless. Ladies and gentlemen, disasters have no religion. COVID, conflict, climate change reminds us of this every day. There is no case for adding more fault lines to this one world we live in. What about my service in the army? I was a lone Muslim in my course of almost 200 cadets in the NDA. I was commissioned into a camel regiment of Rajputs, and there were 16 officers in this regiment who fought shoulder to shoulder in the Battle of Longewala. I will tell you the composition of these 16 officers. Two Muslims, two Sikh, one Christian, and one Jew. That represents the strength of the country. Nobody talked about faith or asked me my religion. It was my personal matter. Our combined loyalty was to uphold the honor of the regiment and the honor of the country. Later on, when I was a general, troops under my command quelled the riots in Gujarat. They were totally neutral and dealt with arsonists and trouble creators with a heavy hand. The social media has a terrible way of looking at things. A post advised me to go to Pakistan. I replied, I've already spent three months there in Pakistan occupied since after the Battle of Longewala, and I didn't even have a visa. I am aware of the torrent of hateful posts on the social media. I think that is the biggest culprit which is afflicting the unity of our country. Our successes in various wars we have fought, especially 1971, was largely due to the unity and diversity of our country. Caste, color, creed, sex, domicile, and religion meant nothing to the soldier when it comes to comradery. Comradery means izzat of the regiment one serves in and the izzat of the country. I was also vice chancellor of Aligarh Muslim University. Why is the name anathema to a large number of us? Isn't there a Banaras Hindu University? Isn't there a Hindu college? Isn't there a Khalsa college, a St. Stephen's? Ladies and gentlemen, all these names are tributes to diversity of our country. You may have a mistaken impression that Aligarh Muslim University is a glorified madrasa. Let me assure you, it is not. It is a modern secular university. I was asked, why is the proportion of Muslims more in AMU than other universities? My reply was that major departments like Urdu, Farsi, Arabic, Quranic studies, Yunani medicine are only sought for by Muslims. I wish there were more applicants for these uh, very, very important departments. The only opties are Muslims. Students there, when I took over, certainly harbored a feeling 
that in the job market, they would be discriminated against. I put their minds at rest, quoting the example of three of, two other siblings of mine, and I told them, I always stressed, discrimination is embedded in human nature. But I also asked, who's being discriminated against? They said, us. I said, no, it is the less educated. And ladies and gentlemen, I am being no hypocrite. Discrimination is only against the less educated. The silver lining is that the Muslim community, especially the girls, have taken to education in a very big way. I was also asked what makes India unique. India is unique because it is a salad bone nation, salad bowl nation. I'll just explain what it is. It is a nation where one's individual identity, culture, language, you can hold on and not forsake like you have to do in a melting pot nation like America. You can, if you want to be accepted, Ideal is to marry an Anglo-Saxon or somebody like that. In a salad bowl nation, which is our country, you can identify the carrot from the cucumber, from the lettuce and the olives. We all are together in the salad bowl, all identifiable and all making it very, very palatable. If an attempt is made to churn up the salad, would it be palatable? I can certainly say not. It would be unpalatable. I will end with some words for all of you to mull over. Always remember, we are Team India. Diversity embellishes the idea of India. Diversity does not imply division. It is a glue. It makes India incredible. We are unique. Incredible India is invincible India when it is Team India. Thank you very much. Jai Hind.